Hey everyone! As you can probably guess, uh, today I'm going to review a brand new graphics card from NVIDIA that you probably won't be able to buy, the RTX 3080 Ti. Now this card is supposed to fill the gap between the RTX 3080 and the 3090, and because the current situation with the stock is so obviously more than fine, NVIDIA thought this would be a perfect moment to launch yet another graphics card. The MSRP is set to $1200, but as we all know by now, that doesn't really mean much nowadays. So, in case you somehow magically manage to find one of these cards in stock somewhere, this review might come handy. So let's begin. This video is brought to you by Seasonic and their Prime Series power supplies. These top quality power supplies are very efficient, they're whisper quiet, extremely reliable and my go-to choice for most of my test rigs and builds around here. And to make the deal even sweeter, Seasonic wraps it all up in a cozy 12-year-long warranty. Check them out using the links in the description below. So basically, 3080 Ti is very similar to the rest of the RTX 3000 series GPUs. It uses the exact same silicon found in both the 3080 and the 3090, but then with a different number of cores and the amount of memory. Now looking at the specs, it is almost an RTX 3090, but then with half of the memory, but keep in mind, 12 gigabytes should still be more than enough for gamers, even on a 4K resolution, which kind of puts the original 3090 in a workstation card category for anyone that really needs a lot of VRAM. Since they are all in the same RTX 3000 series family, anything you've seen before, as far as features go, so things like ray tracing, DLSS, NVENC encoder and so on, will apply to this new card as well. Now, even though it is more like a 3090 on the inside, it looks exactly the same as the 3080 on the outside. It is a very sleek and elegant design in my opinion, and it would be perfect for anyone that's trying to, you know, get away from the very popular RGB trend. The logo does light up, but it is still very discreet. NVIDIA is sticking with their 12-pin connector as well, and they do include a splitter, so you can power it up using regular 8-pin connectors on your power supply. The cables are a bit short and it can end up looking a bit messy, so if your power supply manufacturer has custom 12-pin cables for these cards, I would try to get that instead. Seasonic, for example, even ships these nicer cables for free if you already bought one of their compatible power supplies, so I will leave a link down below if you want to check them out. When it comes to testing, I'll be comparing uh, this card to the RTX 2080 Ti as well as the RTX 3080, 3090 and AMD's closest graphics card in this magical made-up price land, the RX 6900 XT. Now I have the reference cards for the 3080 and the 6900 XT, but unfortunately I don't have the Founders Edition for the 2080 Ti nor the 3090, so for the 2080 Ti I use Gigabyte Aorus Extreme and for the 3090 I use MSI Supreme, so do keep that in mind uh, when it comes to all these benchmark results because those two chips will be represented by some of the fastest models on the market. And I will also leave the exact spec of my test bench in the description down below if anyone is interested in that. Starting with Assassin's Creed Odyssey, we can see some clear CPU limitations at 1080p resolution. At 1440p, the 3080 Ti and the 3090 pull ahead of the 3080, and the 6900 XT is keeping up nicely this time around, but 2080 Ti is clearly behind. But on 4K resolution, we can finally see the real benefit of having a newer generation card. The 2080 Ti is clearly having some difficulties, while the 3080 Ti basically offers the same level of performance as the 3090, with the 3080 being 8% behind the Ti. Assassin's Creed Valhalla is pretty interesting because in this game we can see the 3080 Ti outperforming the RTX 3090. The 3080 is again pretty close behind the Ti, but keep in mind, on a 4K resolution, those few extra frames the Ti gives you will be more than welcome. Unfortunately though, for Nvidia, AMD pulls ahead in this game by a huge margin, especially on 1080p and 1440p. Far Cry 5 is really starting to show its age, as it looks like we're running into CPU limitations at both 1080p and 1440p. Uh, it is nice to see that there is a room for a little bit of an upgrade if you're on a 2080 Ti and you're gaming on a 4K resolution, but I'm probably going to drop this title for Far Cry 6 later this year, as no recent high-end GPU is really struggling with this title. In Division 2, the 3080 Ti is yet again performing close to the RTX 3090, with the 3080 a couple of percent behind, 
And I would say that only in a 4K resolution you will experience a tangible benefit from this new TI, as it is about 10% faster. In Metro Exodus, the original version, not the enhanced one, uh, we can see a bit more of a consistent 10 to 12% gap between the 3080 and the 3080 Ti across all three resolutions, especially if you play with both RTX and DLSS enabled. This game more clearly shows what we would normally expect considering the spec differences between the RTX cards. And the same goes for the Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Now, obviously, this game will run really well on all of these cards, but it does show that the RTX 3080 Ti falls nicely between the 3080 and the 3090. When it comes to Total War Troy, all of these cards can play this game easily on all three resolutions as well, but the 3080 Ti is more than 30% faster than the older RTX 2080 Ti and shows a nice 6-8% increase over the 3080 non-Ti. In Borderlands 3 we have the same story as above with good results across the board, where the main benefit of the 3080 Ti over the 2080 Ti is on a 4K resolution with a difference of more than 50%. But it also shows that the RX 6900 XT is a strong competitor here. Doom Eternal is a game that shows really high FPS on all resolutions, and it is a great title to show performance potential. Even at 1080p, you can see a performance benefit uh, from a 3090 over a 3080 Ti and the 3080 trailing behind them a bit. It is surprising how well AMD does here on 1080p, but on 4K, Nvidia overtakes AMD with a 3080 Ti outperforming the 3080 by about 9%. Control is a pretty good game for NVIDIA in general, as it's really heavy to run, which means that if you just run a 4K resolution, having the latest high-end NVIDIA card shows a huge benefit over having the older generation or even AMD's current top-end card. But it's especially good as a showcase for ray tracing and DLSS. Just enabling DLSS is enough to suddenly play this game on 4K 144 plus FPS while still looking great, and with ray tracing on, we're still well above 90 FPS. It is over 50% faster than the RTX 2080 Ti, which is a pretty big deal, but a 3080 isn't too far behind. Wolfenstein Youngblood, another game with both RTX and DLSS support, shows the 3080 Ti nicely in between the 3080 and the 3090. It is about 8-11% faster than the 3080 and 3-4% behind the 3090. In Watch Dogs Legion, uh, with RTX and DLSS enabled, the 3080, 3080 Ti and 3090 are all performing about the same on 1080p and 4040p resolution, but on 4K we can see where we expect them to be, with the Ti being 8% ahead of the 3080, but 4% behind the 3090. In Outriders, both with DLSS enabled and disabled, the RTX 3080 Ti on average did just slightly better than the 3090. Again, 3080 is not too far behind, and the only resolution where any of this actually matters is 4K, where the RTX 2080 Ti is the only card here struggling to hit 60 FPS. And the last, but definitely not the least game I tested is Cyberpunk, uh, which is one of the most system-heavy titles at the moment. Even the 3080 Ti and the 3090 are struggling to hit 60 FPS on 4K. Now, DLSS makes a big impact, uh, which for now is still a strong perk of Nvidia compared to AMD. Now, AMD has just announced that they will be launching their DLSS alternative later this June, which is very good to hear, and that is definitely a right direction for AMD in my opinion. But just like with Nvidia, it will probably take a few months at the very least before we start seeing some widespread adoption. So, at least for now, Nvidia does hold the stronger cards as far as features go. Aside from DLSS and RTX benefits, their NVENC encoder is still a big plus for anyone that wants to stream. Uh, it makes a big difference if you work in Premiere as well. Uh, there's also the Reflex that reduces the latency and is now supported in a ton of games, actually. And there are a couple of small features worth considering, like NVIDIA Broadcast, for example. Now, all of these are the same as on the previous RTX card, so I won't go into them any further. But I do want to talk about the thermal performance, as there were some concerns about NVIDIA using the same thermal solution of the RTX 3080 on a card that has a TDP of the RTX 3090. 
but fortunately enough, the results are actually looking pretty decent. After a 30 minute stress test, my sample came in at a core temperature of 73.3 degrees and a hotspot of 86.7 degrees, which is well within specification. With 39 decibels at 50 centimeters distance, it is also not loud at all. I mean, you can hear it, but it is perfectly acceptable. Larger aftermarket coolers of upcoming custom cards should be able to provide even lower temperatures and noise levels, so keep an eye on those too. Power consumption is pretty close to the listed 350 watt TDP. I measured my card at around 345 watts compared to 318 watts on my 3080 Founders Edition and 370 watts for the 3090 Supreme, which is all pretty much expected. Clock speeds came in at an average of 1868 MHz, which is well above spec. It is a little bit lower than most 3080 cards I saw last year, including the Founders Edition, and it is actually a bit lower than most 3090 cards I've tested as well. So it is possible that we'll see a bit more performance uh, squeezed out of the custom TI cards. But even without seeing the custom cards, I think it's pretty clear what this 3080 Ti is performance-wise. Now, compared to the RTX 2080 Ti on average, I saw about a 27% gain on 1080p, 35% on 1440p and around 42% on 4K resolution, which makes the 3080 Ti a huge upgrade over the 2080 Ti. It is about 5% faster than a 3080 on 1080p and closer to 9-11% to on 1440p and 4K resolution, which is again pretty significant. If you already have a 3080, there won't be a need to get a TI, but if you find both at similar prices, the TI is definitely a stronger choice. And at the same time, it's only a couple of percent behind the RTX 3090, so unless you absolutely need 24 gigabytes of VRAM, there is no need to spend a lot more on a 3090. Compared to the 6900 XT, the TI is about 5% faster on lower resolutions and about 7% on 4K. Now, obviously that doesn't include ray tracing and DLSS, and Nvidia still has other very strong features that AMD still needs to work on, at least for now, so do take that in consideration. Now, in theory, if we look at the MSRPs, even though they mean absolutely nothing nowadays, this 3080 Ti should be a better deal than the RTX 3090, with the 3080 being a little bit slower for a lot less money. So that makes the 3080 Ti more of a luxury card for anyone who can easily afford it and just wants more performance than the 3080. But the reality nowadays is that these cards are probably going to be impossible to find, and if you do find some, they probably won't be even close to the MSRP. Uh, there are actually some screenshots going around on Twitter of a few shops listing them for $2,500, which is just purely insane. So for now, all I can hope for is that this review will help you make a better decision at some point in the future where you can actually make any decision between any actual cards. And yeah, that's it for now. Sorry for being a bit vague, but that's what you get with GPU reviews nowadays now. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one. Bye guys.